Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. For this very quick guide, let's take another look at the liquid effects that we covered before. If you're not sure about that, there's a link in the description. You can go and check out that tutorial and then um, come back and see what's happening here. So what we're going to do is use that filter combination to make a liquid version of the very basic image mask method of writing on text, like you can see here. So we'll jump over into a project that I've got ready to go. This is just uh, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. So I have my group set up here. Uh, first of all, we have this Bezier path, which I've just drawn to come in and traverse the text glyphs like this. And this Bezier path is acting as a mask for this image mask here. So I've got an image mask applied to the text and the Bezier path is the source for that image mask. The mask is set to add so as the mask comes in it's going to reveal the text as it goes. It's a very basic method for creating a write-on effect with so what we're going to do now is create that uh, line of liquid and you'll see that I've got the liquid filter combination here on the text group, the levels filter and the gouge and blur. So what I'm going to do is grab this mask source, the busier path, I'm going to duplicate that, drag that into the text group and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to give it the same color as the text. Now I'm going to change this, let's just rename it to liquid path. What we want to do now is change this from a solid to an airbrush. Come into advanced and turn on dynamics and click show to open things up. So we're going to change the life to 0.18 and we'll drop the speed down to 0. So this is what we have so far. The next thing we're going to do is come to behaviors, grab particles behavior, scale over life, and we're going to set the scale at birth to 200 and the scale at death to 0. And we're done. So just to recap, what we've done is we have used an airbrush with the dynamics parameters uh, adjusted to create this kind of water drop effect and then we've used uh, particle behavior to have everything coming out large and tapering off at the end there. And from here there's a million things you can do with this particular style to create lots of different um, water paths but I'll leave you to discover uh, what they are. Uh, what I'll just point out is that um, the important parameters, if you want to experiment around, scale at birth, sure, scale at death. Um, scale at birth is going to determine the size up front. The next parameter to think about is life. So life is going to determine how long it gets. And so you can imagine if you start to keyframe these, uh, the scale over life and the life parameter, then you're going to get lots of variations. And the other thing to think about is speed. So I've got speed set to zero, uh, but if we start to adjust speed, then interesting things will start to happen. You can get these uh, water droplet trails. And by keyframing, you can decide when they appear and when they stop. 
Another parameter that's useful to play with is the brush scale here, so that you can keyframe as well to make the overall uh, path thicker or thinner. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if the brush scale is the same as the width when you're using this uh, airbrush in motion. I'm quite sure they, they're there for different reasons, uh, but when I'm using an airbrush, I use the brush scale to adjust the width. Okay, then that's what I wanted to show you today. I hope that's useful for you, and thanks for watching.